afternoon everyone i'm glad you're here thank you very much for joining me the live webcam is still down so here's a um, bunch of images all put together from the static webcam looks like it stopped let's see what time did it stop and i'll play it again let's see it stopped at 11:14 yesterday tuesday june 27th let's play it again let me bring it down okay it starts out it's um, 5 a.m and now we got 6 a.m and i noticed the back geysers were really steaming away um there was a lot of activity at yellowstone yesterday and of course all i had of view was the static cam um, it won't show today's static cam until tomorrow you know put together with um making a little video out of it but i was wondering if the activity that i was seeing was caused by uh, the storms that had come through there was some thunderstorms and some heavy rain and i'm going to show you uh, what i saw and then i'm also wondering if they come through later and change the data luckily i did catch some images of the data there it stopped now this is yellowstone lake at 659 and you know uh, 50 seconds you should recognize this blank spot which means that magma was coming in it was screaming this image here is uh, west thumb and then the other image is uh, soda butte yeah it was really active let me show you the post that i tweeted right there so we got the first one was uh, yellowstone lake it was screaming uh, soda butte and then west thumb so this here is soda butte once in a while it has all kinds of activity you can see the uh, heat that was coming up and all the earthquakes let's go to the signature see how it was popping and it went yeah pop 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 okay we'll bring it over so you can see this this is very concerning um i'm not sure what time i posted this but this is 2142 universal time yesterday so this would have been at 342 local time and we'll just keep on bringing it over yeah it was really hot now this is the northern part of the caldera this is where they have been recording uplift okay and i'm going to show you yellowstone lake this is about the same time yesterday and it was really active also and we'll just bring it across i'm going to go back to that time where i documented um, where it was screaming and i'll show you something you can see the line of melt on both sides where it started screaming this is the screen capture that i took so it started about 16 59 and 50 seconds and ended at almost um, exactly 1700 now that's universal all right 16 59 and 50 seconds right there until let me mark that until about 1700 right there i'm wondering if they came in later and changed the data now you know darn well they got the technology to to do that now common sense would tell you that if for some reason there was a power outage the data would have been lost so how could they go back in later and put it back in all right so we got a little kind of a little bump there and then over here almost looks like a little bird head going back to the screen capture that would be the little bump and this right here would probably be the bird head i now wish i had captured the seismic signature on this but i didn't so we'll go here to the seismic signature and let's make this bigger
I don't know. What do you think? Now, this here is the borehole for Yellowstone Lake, which is up by the fishing bridge. So I don't know why from yesterday afternoon until today it would show something different. Let's look at this. We got the line of melt. Um, there is one right here that's marked in red. A small earthquake. Yeah, popping up the ground. And this is what it's showing when I pulled the files. We got another one marked in red. Looks like right there, popping of the ground. And then there was, let's look at the spectrogram. And then there was another one. Let's see. Right here. Okay. Oh, actually, there's probably a couple of them marked in red more recently. Okay, we got that one. I did that one. And one, two. That's all recently. Okay. And then we'll look at the spectrogram, what it was showing when I pulled the files. And let's take a look at the seismic signature. Yeah, we got um, some tectonic movement, but technically they call it volcanic tectonic earthquakes. It's because of the strain of the ground pushing up on the fault lines, um, the stress creating the earthquakes at a volcano. Now this is the monitor for West Thumb. I believe this one was a magnitude 1.6 something. Um, it's no longer. Well, I'll show you. We'll put it there and we'll put it there. And I'll bring it down so you can see it. 1.68. They're not reporting it. They're only reporting one earthquake today. But at West Sound, we got a lot of popping. And you'll remember how um, in my last video for Yellowstone, I talked about the scenario, the drill that they did. Um, in case there's um, a large earthquake and a tsunami there at West Thumb. I believe, and I want to say they did that drill back in 2011. And then going up over here, uh, let's see, we got a lot more popping going on. I'll show you the signature. See that? Um, something else I haven't talked about in a while. When it shows the first wave of the earthquake coming from the top, that means the earthquake came from the north. If the majority of the wave is pointing down, that means the earthquake came from the south of the location of this earthquake. I believe this monitor is over by Grant. Now it's going to go so small I can't see it. So let me go to go to the Google Earth. Okay, so most of the earthquakes are north. And here we have uh, Borehole 944. And I'll bring it out. Now, in their scenario, they felt that there was going to be an earthquake swarm up to the north in this area. And then a magnitude 4.4 .4 earthquake and then the tsunami occurred. I'll give you a link down below for this document. Um, the first day, yeah, uh, up over here was an earthquake swarm. And I explained all this and I read all this. And then the tsunami. This here would be day one with the earthquake swarm. And then there was another earthquake swarm about three days later. And then the tsunami. And then uh, the little blast down here, that's a hydrothermal explosion, day eight. And day three, another hydrothermal explosion. So I find that interesting. They did that drill. And then we got all this popping going on, showing it's coming from the north of Grant, where they have the monitor. All right, here we have the monitor for the western boundary. We got a lot of earthquakes that were occurring. Let's pull that. Yeah, volcanic, tectonic. Now, the western boundary, that's where the west entrance is. And there was a lot going on. Let me, oh, and that's slow moving tremors. Those are bad too. Okay, let's go back to the, um, pull up where I was last gathered my data. Okay, we'll come down here and see the line of melt up at the top there. 
and then the most recent earthquakes is right here at 1647 there was several of them we got one there let's go to the seismic signature and pull it across oops looks like it's going small I hate that when it goes small I bet you you do too <laughs> yeah all right let's make this one bigger see what we got yep see again volcanic tectonic earthquakes I got a paper here I'll show you volcanic tectonic earthquakes VTS's are simply put caused by the slip of a fault near a volcano volcanoes are often found in areas of crustal weakness and the mass of the volcano itself adds to the regional strain uh, most VT earthquakes have nothing to do with the mag magmatic system of the volcano but occur in response to regional strain exerted in the area of the fault. That's because of the magma coming up. VTS also can be generated from the changes of pressure under the volcano caused by the injection or removal of magma, molten rock, from the volcanic system. After the withdrawal of magma from a system, an empty space is left to be filled. The, the result is a collapse of the surrounding rock to fill the void, also creating earthquakes. Well, we don't want the caldera to collapse, do we? Now, this is important because I've been talking about the uh, slow-moving earthquakes. If a significant introduction of new magma from depths occur in the system, both VTs and long-period earthquakes are likely to be generated. Okay, and here down here at the bottom, we got the slow-moving tremors. Above that is low-frequency earthquakes, hybrid earthquakes, low-frequency earthquakes, and volcanic tectonic earthquakes. Let me bring this down. Try and make that bigger for you guys to see. And we'll pull it up. I like how they put this where it's just so calm and so, <laughs> um, yeah, nothing to worry about. Volcanically caused long period earthquakes are probably by vibrations generated by the movement of magma or other fluids within the volcano. Pressure within the system increased or increases and the surrounding rocks fail creating small earthquakes. And they talk about St. Helens, how uh, the doming began building as a magma thrust upward accompanied by long period earthquakes. So here we have one long period earthquake. We got another one here. If I can make that bigger. There you go. Just creeps along. Do, 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 do. And then down here, of course. And let's take a look up here. Yeah, we got drum some drum beats up here. Yeah, the popping of the rock where the red lines are at. Now that one, this is the western boundary. That earthquake came from the south. Let me pull this over so you can see it. See how it's pointing downwards? Yeah, okay, what's the next one? Uh, where is it at? I'll just go here. From the south. This one here. From the south. See how it's pointing down? And this monitor is the borehole for the Norris Geyser Basin. Alright, let's take a look at some of this stuff and we'll look at the signatures. Yeah. Go there. Oh, there's some popping. Let's take a look at the popping. Okay, and some more popping there. And then we'll bring it down to what it was showing when I pulled the files. Yep. Let's take a look at the spectrogram. Yeah, the line of melt. Again, this is for the Norris Geyser Basin area. Uh, this is where um, they know they got magma intrusion. 
and uplift all along the northern side of the caldera. Let's see. Let's take a look at here. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Yeah, volcanic tectonic earthquakes. Now, they believe and they hope if there's going to be a large eruption that they will be seeing signs of ground deformation, uplift, and a lot of earthquake swarms. And they also believe that if there's going to be a small eruption, they might not have any warning at all. I have a video here I'm going to play for you. It's from the National Park Service and it features um, Hank Hessler. And it, and it talks about uh, large eruptions and small eruptions and how much warning they think they might have. One of the important aspects of the monitoring equipment is to be able to give scientists the ability to predict in advance when an eruption is going to occur. And in its simplest form, the larger the potential eruption, the more molten rock that's coming up over a greater area, the more signals that will occur. The more earthquakes that will occur, the larger the area affected, the more the ground deformation will be occurring in that area, and uh, the more there will be changes in the thermal system and gases. So the larger the eruption, the more advanced notice there will be, and the smaller the eruption, the less advanced notice. But that's the way we would hope it would be, because the smaller the eruption, the less the effect of it uh, to Yellowstone or even to smaller areas than just the park itself. Here on the thumbnails, they show all the earthquakes that are currently going on and what was occurring last night. And yeah, um, this is what I posted and I shared to um, Twitter. And you can see, yeah, it was interesting. Soda Butte was showing all that activity and also Mammoth Vault. Look at that. And this is what it was currently showing. Now, again, that's also up. It's actually past, supposedly past, the uh, northern edge of the caldera. So, what are your thoughts? Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. As always, be prepared. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.